We have another transformative week full of planetary transits. In this week's astrology, Saturn's going retrograde, allowing us to reevaluate the importance of structure in our lives. Venus will be very active this week, which will give us the urge to focus on our love lives, what we value, self-esteem, and finances. And it's another busy week for Mercury, allowing us to work on our long-term plans, communication, and our mindset. So because we have a week that's a little rough around the edges, with some sweet spots, the vibes on the graph are mixed. The beginning of the week, the 24th, has a smidge of good luck energy mixed in with emotional sensitivity, which might cause our moods to feel out of whack around that day. So we may vacillate between feeling hopeful one moment and then experiencing a bunch of stress and knacks. From the 26th to the 29th, that good luck energy will be present again, and it will be very prominent. Also, it's mixing in with mental ambition, imagination and confusion, psychic tones, and an abundance of romantic vibes. So some of this might feel a little bit odd because we could be feeling extra sensory from all that psychic energy, but also with that imagination and confusion, we might have a lot of moments of self-doubt about trusting our gut instincts or whether our intuition is way out of base. But despite all of that, it might be easier to just enjoy ourselves throughout the weekend, even with all that fogginess going on because of the romance energy that we have and also some fun energies from Venus and Mars, which of course includes the romance, but also the need to have exhilarating experiences experiences as well. So yeah, the last week of June is here and it's colorful as hell. Let's look at the next bunch of days and see what we can expect. Monday opens up with a transit that can bring in some unanticipated reactions concerning our love lives and finances. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps this channel grow. Also, if you're looking for a natal chart reading or intuitive coaching, the links will be in the description box below. And if you'd like to support the work of this channel, you could do so by buying me a fresh cup of coffee. The link will be in the description box below as well. Venus is gonna make a semi square to Uranus and that right there can lead to some moments where impulsive behavior seems more revved up than typical. So with a vibe like this, we need to be aware of our reactions and this feeling of pins and needles that we might be on considering this is the type of transit that brings to our awareness where we might be lacking progress or something just may be on hold or we just overall feel stagnant within our love lives and finances and other areas of life and so a vibe like this could really key up that sort of nervous energy where we feel like we need to do something in order to get things moving and so one of the things with this energy is it's not best to do that it's not best to react act when this energy is happening. I know not everyone has the luxury to not act sometimes. And as a matter of fact, there are times in life where we need to take action on things. But with energy like this, if we decide to make sudden alterations to our love lives or finances, there could be problematic things that happen as a result. So there are consequences that do come with this energy. So if you have the luxury to, try to wait until the right moment. Try to make sure you have some sort of exit strategy when it comes down to job, when it comes down to problematic relationships, because of course, some of this energy deals with toxicity within those environments, within a work environment where you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired, but also a relationship that may be restrictive or there's odd behavior going on. There could be an urge to pull the rug from under the thing and that can create sudden upheaval in already stressful situations. Speaking of odd behavior, like I said earlier, another thing that can show up with energy like this is someone acting odd within a relationship or doing things for a reaction at a job situation. So there could be some really unpredictable energy in those areas and maybe on the relationship end, it might be doing something odd just to spice things up. On the job end, it could be someone trying to act like they're original and unique just to get the attention and win the favor of supervisors and things like that. So this is very awkward energy. Do the best you can to navigate this. Over the next 72 hours, we have some varying mercurial energies going on. On the 25th, Mercury's going to make a trine with Saturn. And so this might be useful in reducing some of the edgier energies that we've had at the beginning of the week on that particular Monday. An energy like this is excellent for using our intuition and creativity to make long-term plans. Mercury is currently in Cancer. And so the great thing about this is it allows for us to use more of our intuitive side, the more intuitive side of Mercury, but also it brings in a perfect blending of logic and intuition. So we can use this if we're trying to brainstorm what we'd like to do with ourselves in, in terms 
terms of what we'd like to do with ourselves, what are our long-term goals? What objectives do we have that we really want to carry out? Because energy like this, anytime you have a Mercury-Saturn harmonious alignment, it helps us focus on what kind of outcome we want. So mentally, we may feel a significant boost from this energy to solve problems, especially things that were overcomplicated to us. This may be a time where we feel sharper than usual and we have the focus needed in order to like, like tackling those things that we generally don't have the bandwidth for. Another great thing with this energy is it's excellent for getting back on track, especially if we felt disorganized for a while and like nothing was really necessarily going the way we'd like it to because either we've been off kilter or there has been some obstacles thrown our way. And so now this is a time to really get back on track and start keeping our eye on the prize. Communication wise, this energy is excellent for having constructive conversations. Tend to have beneficial chats in this energy. Chats that actually go somewhere and lead to something that's actually fruitful. So this could be a day where we're feeling like our conversations are actually going somewhere rather than feeling scattered and all over the place. By the time we get to the 28th, we have another Mercury transit that's absolutely the opposite of the one that we just had with Saturn on Tuesday. Mercury is going to make a semi-square with Jupiter, and this is the one where we can feel distracted. So Tuesday is a day to really get things done and get the stuff that's daunting out the way and requires a lot of your attention because by the time we get to Thursday, I'm sorry, Friday, the 28th is Friday, but by the time we get to that point in time, this energy tends to rev up scatteredness. Also with this energy, it has some fun stuff to it because anytime you add Jupiter, there is an element of fun to things, but at the same time, an energy like this can be stressful because we lack a lot of focus. Also, communication tends to take on a weird tone. It takes on a weird tone in the sense where we could be dealing with people who are stretching the truth. We could be dealing with people who are speaking very boastfully. It could just be a day where we're dealing with those who love the sound of their own voice. So that really adds an element of irritation to it. And also with this too, we have to be aware of our tempers in a way because this energy tends to create situations where people overreact and are easily provoked. It amps up conversations in a way where people talk big and kind of throw their weight around a little bit. With Mercury being in Cancer and Jupiter being in Gemini, on the Cancer end, we have to remind ourselves not to emotionally react. On the Jupiter end, there could be moments where we're, there's misinformation or a misunderstanding and also some gossipy elements too. So energy like this can really be inappropriate and uncomfortable. If we stick to light stuff like philosophy and fun Jupiterian topics or mercurial topics, generally an energy like this is tolerable, but for the most part, it really does amp up problematic behavior and communication. And also pay attention to the details if you can. If you feel like your judgment is poor or you're skimming things, try to wait until the right moment if you have the luxury to, to go over important things like if you're signing up for memberships or subscriptions or important documents and things like that because energy like this can make us skim things and overlook some and then before you know it, we've got a problem. Continuing with the Jupiterian energy, the sun's gonna make a semi-sextile with Jupiter as well. And this happens on Saturday. Saturday happens to be a jam-packed day full of planets transits, we have a multitude of transits occurring on that day. Some are harder than others while, you know, we've got one easy one occurring during that time period. But with the Sun semi-sextile Jupiter, it's a fun energy, but because it's a hard transit, it does bring with it some downside energies to it as well. On the more upbeat sides of this energy, we'll be in the mood to go on adventures, have fun, look for exhilarating experiences, be open to learning new things, and overall, we'll feel upbeat as hell with an energy like this. We'll feel extra confident too. And so that's a good thing. The downside to this overconfident energy is we might vacillate between arrogant to entitled. And also there's another weird thing that does happen with this energy. For as puffed up as it is, there can be a chance for ego deflation. So somebody might take the wind out of our sails if we're being too much, if we're being extra. So there's that on top of this. And also with this energy, we need to be aware of being so overconfident that we take unnecessary risk. As a matter of fact, it's a day to really gauge risk because we also have something else going on that can really impair our judgment. Mars is making a semi-sextile with Neptune and that can lead to unfocused action. So with this keyed up Jupiterian energy we have going on and then this Mars semi-sextile Neptune situation, we need to be aware of being impatient. We need to be aware of feeling so confident that we think something is a sure thing and so we take action on that. We 
we need to be aware of poor reactions when it comes down to our temper and how we react to things that are uncomfortable. And also this is a kind of energy where we can overdo it and overdo it in the sense where there's escapism going on. So combined with the Jupiter situation along with this and also that Mercury situation we had with Jupiter the day before because we'll still be feeling that, this could be a day where we're a little out of control when it comes down to indulgences but also when it comes down to escaping in stimulants and drinking and anything that we can binge on. Continuing with the martial energies occurring on the 29th, Venus is going to make a sextile to Mars and this is one of the most favorable aspects of the week besides that Mercury Saturn situation that we had going on a couple of days back. So this one combined with those other two, hopefully it brings in some mitigation. Also Saturn is going retrograde on that same day too. So maybe that might bring some sort of mitigation, but this alignment in itself is a lot of fun. And it's a lot of fun because it helps us take construction action when it comes down to Venus and Mars things. So this can be taking constructive action when it comes down to our love lives, when it comes down to our finances, when it comes down to boosting our confidence and working on self-worth or aligning ourselves with our values by taking action on those things and making sure that they're incorporated in our lives in every way. So this really gives us an encouraging boost to seek out things that are really favorable for us. It's going to help us feel really ambitious when it comes down to these areas of life. So we can find ourselves going for the gold because we're feeling enthusiastic about what's around the corner for us. Energy like this gives us confidence. So let's just say you're focusing on your love life. If you're wanting to work on your old day habits and get out of a stale period if you've been in a rut for a while. This could give you the motivation to jumpstart something that helps you open up love life wise. For couples, this may be a time to become more of an active participant in your relationship. In other words, initiating things like fun dates and intimacy and other things to really just show your affection and renew passion within the relationship. On other levels, maybe this is a time where you're wanting to build yourself up in terms of your style and fashion. So Venus has a lot to do with how we adorn ourselves and Mars is how we take action. So this could be a time to update your wardrobe and just go out and buy a few things to zhuzh yourself up which in turn could be excellent for just boosting your self-esteem and confidence overall. On a professional level, this may be a time where you feel encouraged to do things that'll get you ahead. So this could be about applying for new things. And by that, going for a promotion, applying for a new job, and anything that's gonna really help you get to the next level in your career overall. So it's an excellent time to consider strategies that you can act on in terms of moving up the ladder in your current position or looking for something that best fits who you are now on a professional level. Continuing with the jam-packed day of the 29th, Saturn is going retrograde. So now we have the second outer planet of the 2024 retrograde cycle finally going into its regressive motion. Well, it's actually stationing. And so right now, Saturn is still, and Saturn is at its strongest right now. Anytime a planet goes into a station period, whether it's in or out of retrograde, it is at its most powerful. So this energy that we're gonna be getting from the Saturn retrograde is gonna be very potent for a bunch of days. We'll be feeling this potent energy for at least a week or so with Saturn being a slower moving planet. And also because it's a slower moving planet, this celestial body stays in retrograde for four and a half months. And counting the pre and post shadow a little longer in terms of its phase. All of the outer planets are pretty much in retrograde phases for half the year. Pluto being the slowest, of course. Then Neptune, then Uranus, then Saturn, then Jupiter. So now we have the ring planet in its regressive motion. And it went into its pre-shadow on March 23rd. So think about what was going on with you regarding Saturnian themes. Where were you trying to create stability in your life? Has this been a period where you've examined a lack of solidness in your life, a lack of consistency, a lack of commitment in certain areas of life, or areas where you need to be more responsible, or even understanding that there's a lack of integrity going on in your life. And because of these types of themes, this could be a period where we're starting to see that we need to work on becoming more disciplined. So this retrograde could be a time to really dial it back if we've been out of control or out of whack or had no system in order. So this could be a time to work on that so we get back on track and create structures for ourselves that help us stay consistent. And also get to a place where we're maturing, get to a place where we're holding ourselves accountable. And maybe we're wanting to get back on track because we're looking to level up in all areas of our lives. So getting some sort of level of discipline and system in order was only gonna help us push ourselves 
ourselves further, which is what Saturn is about. It's about overcoming your obstacles to reveal your true potential. And so is this a time where you're wanting to leave a positive mark on something? And by that, is this a time where you're wanting to build yourself up professionally? Are you wanting to create some sort of trustworthy reputation or make yourself appear solid because you've worked so hard in the background with whatever goals you might have and now you're really wanting to show that to the world and yourself as an authority present yourself as someone who's mastered something within this type of energy it has a lot to do with professional goals it has a lot to do with our career so this could be presenting yourself as an authority in your field and wanting to leave your mark on the world wanting to leave a lasting impression because you've committed yourself to this feat and you're wanting to create some sort of legacy also energy like this has us considering how we can forge our own path overall so even if it's not career stuff you're focusing on this could be another goal that you've committed yourself to and now you're wanting to reach that mountaintop or start some sort of journey so you can elevate yourself with Saturn energy come financial goals with this Saturn energy has to do with outward security rather than personal life and emotional security so this could be a time where you're looking at how you can achieve some sort of stability especially when it comes down to finances this could be all about building up something that creates financial freedom for you and any other goals that's tied to outward security this could mark a time where you're committing to yourself and also keeping promises to yourself possibly keeping promises to other people that allows for forward movement and any other types of achievements with Saturn also comes limits and so has this been a period where you've been considering where you can set some limits concerning things that have gotten out of control and of course with things that get out of control we lack consistency and stability or we're just not keeping ourselves accountable so has this been a period where you're realizing that you need to set limits with yourself you need to set boundaries with yourself also with other distractions maybe those other distractions could be other people it could be having a lack of boundaries when it comes down to some of our relationships or accepting poor behavior and that poor behavior ends up coming at a cost to us because we're finding ourselves in the throes of the unconstructiveness of it all and it's put us in a position where we're not thriving at all so the Saturn retrograde can truly be a period where we work on that and we develop healthy boundaries with ourselves and with others retrogrades with the ring planet helps us understand that there are certain behaviors that we're doing that's hindering us and preventing us from thriving in any way that we want so this is truly a period no matter what it might be whatever goal it might be to commit ourselves to the right things and nix things that are holding us back because our soul is at a point where it's craving some sort of structure and a way to really thrive in this world the signs that are going to feel this retrograde more than others is going to be the mutable modality gemini virgo sagittarius and Pisces between 10 to 22 degrees of these signs so if you have planets and chart placements within these zodiac signs you're going to feel this retrograde more than others and Saturn will go direct on November 15th of 2024 and then finally exit its post shadow on February 18th of next year so this has been an interesting week it's definitely mixed bag there feels like there's more harder transits than harmonious ones however we've got some good transits that are going to mitigate some of these harsher energies that will at least allow for some sort of enjoyment and ease. Anyway, I hope you all have the best week ever. Later and see you in the next episode.